This is a dog whistle. It produces a sound heard by a dog, but not a human. If you heard that, you should probably see your doctor or your vet. As a metaphor, dog whistling describes a message designed to be understood by a particular audience while others miss the true meaning. Here is an example. In 2000, Subaru ran this ad slogan. It's not a choice, it's the way we're built. Now, that could have been a reference to Subaru's all-wheel driving system. Or it could have been a reference to being gay. No, it was a reference to being gay. Yeah, we know this because they told us. It's apparent to gay people that we're talking about being gay, but straight people don't know what's going on. To be fair, straight people usually don't know what's going on. But this is a rare example where someone admits to dog whistling. See, the key feature of dog whistling is plausible deniability. That is being able to deny mm. that you said one thing but meant another. This is what makes it so potent in a political context, where dog whistles tend to be less rainbows and more racist. This goes back to 1960s America, where politicians worked out how to appeal to racists without sounding racist. You can't say that hurts your backfire, so you say stuff like the horse busing, states' rights and all that stuff. Yeah, fairly innocuous phrases, right? But like all of these, to a certain audience, they mean something else entirely. So to spot a dog whistle, focus not on what is said, but rather what is heard. If hate groups, for example, respond with delight to a seemingly benign message, there is a good chance there's a not so benign meaning in it. Just like when you blow an actual dog whistle, it's the dog's reaction that tells you it is there.